Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 93, and this is what our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up we have a new digger, Lenoy, who's dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash Tamrak SW. I'm guessing the SW stands for like shareware or something like that. Um, got an infinite, an order, C, type go first, that's only three bytes. <laughs> Okay then, I am instead going to type file id.diz and see what that is. Infinite Fantasies Volume 1, a graphic adventure game that competes with the best. This release is in CGA. Following additions to the volume will be in VJ with Sound Blaster support. Read the docs to find out what the additional advantages are when you register this program. And there's like noise coming up. <laughs> Lots of noise coming from outside right now, so apologies for that. Um. Hmm. No, I guess go. This disc of quality shareware evaluation software is brought to you by Ray Johnson. Strike any cue and ready. Infinite Fantasies Volume 1, Ray Johnson Software. Installer? Really? Okay. Transfer program to CPROM for yeah. Installation complete. No, because I want to see what it did. So that means there's now going to be... Yep. That's basically this... It basically just copied all the files. Okay, so we don't have to worry about Go. We'll do infinite. Um, infin... I... I just... Okay, so now what's it doing? Okay, so now I have a tamrack.exe. Jeez, getting this running is like... <laughs> Graphic Adventure Game System. DC Play, Shareware version, CJ. This game was created using Graphic Adventure Game Builder from DC Software. Play this game using full capability. You must register your copy with DC Software. What? Other... Did, did this... Okay. So, something that I should point out is that in the early days of game creation systems, a common thing that happened was very unusual licensing. So what we have here is a game that was apparently made with some graphic adventure game system, but the graphic adventure game builder requires that you register the game builder itself to get full capabilities out of it for whatever game you want to play with it. So it's like you need to register two things to have a full to have the full gaming experience. <laughs> Anywho, Fantasy Worlds of Tamrak. So an introduction here, I'm starting to get a little your quest will be to go to Tamrak and help your friend Josephus and locate and return the jewels to the icon and destroy Marble Die. I don't know, <laughs> it's henchman once and for all, if you can. And two press spaces to continue. Okay, do we actually have a game now? So, you must create your character. I'll be me. Select a character class. Uh, plus and minus. Beautiful. You have to... <laughs> oh, this is the quality we're going for here. So the minus key works fine. The plus key doesn't unless you're holding shift to make it an actual plus character. Oh boy. <laughs> so we got human, elf, dwarf, wizard, archer, fighter, human. So I can't be both a human and a wizard. I have to be one or the other. I can't be a human and an archer, an archer is like a totally different race or something. This makes no sense. Okay, some of these classes have a distinct advantage over the other classes in terms of what they start with. So yeah, look at this. The human starts with a 9 in all stats, but the fighter starts with 13 in strength, 11 in hit points, and 7 in intelligence. So that's actually a net gain of 4 points over a human. 
So why would you play as a human when you could just play as a fighter and have better stats? Okay, so when I'm done, I push F10. Oh, it's suddenly CGA. Uh, I can't say I wasn't completely unexpecting that, but... Okay, welcome to the lab. There is no diagonal movement. Or if there is, it's not with the numeric keypad. Um, okay, this is kind of interesting. Uh, so, what we got here? Help. Uh, okay, F1. So, attack, board mount, camp, drop object, enter, exit, get object, inventory, look at object, invoke, scroll, primary player, quaff, remove item, spell, cast, talk to, and unlock. Jeez, there's a lot of stat things here. Okay, after the way this started, I wasn't expecting it to become something like this. So, okay, so I can just walk through the doors. I'm like in a room here. So look at, what? Why can't I look at the mirror? I look at whatever that is. Okay, a leather jacket. Let's get the leather jacket. Now, can I equip it? How do I actually use an item? Is it like the invoke scroll thing? No. I have a get object. I have a look at object. I have an inventory. But I don't have a use item. You see a time portal key. Okay, then. And so now here's the problem. I have a time portal key. I'm guessing that maybe whatever that is up there is like a time portal or something. Or a door. Do I have to use enter exit? Since there's no entry or exit here. What do you want from me, game? Okay, I've spent like three minutes just trying every kind of key on the keyboard I can think of. Like, there's no way to use items. There's no way to use items. Am I missing something here? There was a manual.doc. Let me look at the manual.doc, because this is just bizarre. Well, I haven't figured out how to use items, but I did figure out that W is the wear key. So I'm now wearing that leather jacket. But I still have absolutely no idea how to get out of this room. <sighs> there is no use key. There is no use key. I have a time portal key, and... I can't use it anywhere. Because I don't... There's no use key. There's no use key. How do you get anywhere in a game like this without a key to use anything? Okie dokie. I've literally been spent spent like 10 minutes because I couldn't accept that this game that had this massive manual full of stuff wasn't going to go anywhere so I've just been trying everything I could think of and I finally found a hidden door by trying to unlock a, the walls <laughs> I've been unlocking walls and I found a hidden door and unlock it, please, so I can go in and we'll leave this place. Yes. I'm back here. What? Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, there we go. You have... What? What? And then why does it put me there instead of at the door with... <sighs> okay, never mind. Never mind. This game is bizarre. I have figured out how to leave the lab. I can actually do things now. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Holy jeez. You can't make the start of your... Whoa, I just got attacked by something. Um, this... Whatever this monster... This lizard man... Man is, is kicking my butt. Okay, I actually won, but I lost, like, all my health in the process. Got four rotten food. Well, isn't that lovely? 
Because I can camp and restore my hit points. Okay, we got a nice path here. Let's follow the path. Oh, we got a castle. Welcome to Concord. Okay, making progress. Making progress. What do we got over here? Fountain? Look at what? Yeah, you, if you try to look at anything, it doesn't tell you anything. Oh, we got a person. We talk to them. Talk to little girl. I am Mar Marta, the king's daughter. Marta isn't even capitalized. Oh, you actually say stuff. That's interesting. Um, hello. Uh, how are you? Okay, so the, it's not very smart about <laughs> someone else. How do I stop talking? Okay, you just hit you just hit enter and you stop talking. So it's not a full conversation system. You just ask. You just type in topics to query them from the looks of it. I got someone over here. Talk to Farmer. Can you return the jewels? Yes. Crops have been poor with them stolen. Okay then. Uh, bye. Oh, it's that guy looks important. King, civilian, level 9, armor class 21, HP 50. So I could totally attack him and commit um, regicide if I wanted to. <laughs> no, he'd probably kick my butt. Um, talk to King. Welcome, brave adventurer. Will you help us? Yes. Mar Bodai has stolen the 12 precious jewels. Who is Mar Bodai? What if I just say Mar Bodai? Well, aren't you useful? Bye. Do we got anything interesting going on in this castle? Another person here. I am Queen of Tamarack. Can you save us? Yes. You must obtain weapons in the east. Okay, so I know where I need to go now. That's kind of important. Okay, I can go east, but the way it works is that you actually have to push the key multiple times to go through those forest tiles. I guess that's kind of neat. That... It lets you move through them, but just slowly. And I'm dead. I guess that boat was a bad guy? Everything is dark. A voice in the distance says you shall have a second chance. Find your destiny. Ah, you awake, you wake, disoriented and confused. And I'm back here. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough of this game. So that was, um... What was it? <laughs> uh, Infinite Fantasy Adventures Volume 1, The Fantasy Worlds of Tamrak. This was um, kind of like a poor man's Excelsior or Ultima. Like, there's definitely some, definitely some effort put into this in terms of like the graphics and everything, but maybe that's like part of the game, the system that was being used. Like this was clearly made with some kind of game creation system. So I don't know how many of these assets were designed by the person himself or were part of the game creation system he used. So there's no way for me to know how much of this was him and how much wasn't. But if we push F1, we only see these options and there's clearly a W and an X option, and the W option is kind of important because you need to be able to put your weapons on and equip your armor and everything. It's like, I got that backwards. Equip your weapons and put your armor on. Why is that not in the list there? Or why can't the list scroll? And then the fact that there's only four directional movement, it's almost like this game creation system itself is bad, and then somebody else decided to make a game with it, and is now hindered by the fact that this game creation system isn't that great. 1993. Near the end of 1993. So I don't know if that's how old the game creation system that was used to build this was. Also, 1993 with CGA graphics? Really? I do like that it actually loads back up to where I was. So, this thing is just confusing. It's, it's definitely... By 1993, you had games like, you had, you already had Arena out there, <laughs> like Elder Scrolls Arena. 
This had to compete with Elder Scrolls Arena. This had to compete with multiple Ultima titles, not to mention everything on the NES and SNES. And to a lesser extent, the Genesis, because the Genesis didn't have a lot of stuff like this. Not that it didn't, but the point I'm getting at here is that this is very weak compared to what was out there. And it seems like it might be the fault of the game creation system itself. Or it might be partially the fault of the person making it too. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But now this should be a laugh. There is a register.doc. Let's see how much this cost. $10 plus $2 shipping and handling. So, all things considered, that's not a that's definitely a cheap price for a game like this. But at the same time, this game definitely has issues. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether you think this is worth $10. Next up, we have a team dig from Christopher Groff and Justine Topland. DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash snake FTR. I'm going to get something called Snake Fighter. Uh, a lot of files. Um, well, actually, this, this worked fine because there's only 24 files, so everything important is down near the bottom. Um, snake.exe, uh, 11 kilobyte doc file. That's about it. Well, let's just run it, see where we end up. This looks interesting. Um, Snake Fighter by Vivid Games, copyright 1993, version 1.0. Register for $15 to Vivid Game... Vivid Games? <laughs> oh, this looked interesting until you typoed your own name. <laughs> Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> okay, well, may, given... We're, okay, we're working with... What is this, VGA graphics? This might actually be VGA graphics. Well, if it is, we're working with VGA graphics, which is not common for games. So, maybe this will be interesting. Um, it looks like there's four players here. And apparently one of them's just kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, so I can set up multiple players here, as well as CPUs at levels of stupid, average, and smart. Okay, then. So I'll just do it as myself, as the Cobra versus the Viper. And there's also Copperhead and Rattler as, or Rattler as um, opponents. These are the random events. We've got Mines, Speed Up, Slow Downs, 200 Points, Chili Bowls. Length and alcohol. Okay, so this kind of sounds like it's going to be like a nibbles type game, except you're actually competing against other players. Now, I wonder how that's actually going to factor in. Um, you got speed, add length, start length, time, level, and lives. Um, there's also various options here wrap around, speed up, time, terrain. Random often, random normal, random rare, no random, waste? Huh. Okay, well, what are my controls here? Uh, actually, let, let me switch this over to the keypad controls. There we go. So, left, right, up, down, and zero. Now, I wonder if it means the left, right, up, down keys are the actual keypad keys. <laughs> I guess I'm going to find out. So, start. Actually, both of them work. Whoops, that was a landmine. Okie dokie. Okay, so it is sort of like a competitive, um... Competitive nibbles game. Ooh, that's what the length does. Makes me long. So I can block him off. There he goes, he killed himself. So yeah, this is like a competitive, a competitive nibbles game. That's actually pretty neat. And plays plays perfectly fine too. It's a little fast, but up oh, that level is over. Whoops! I picked up the alcohol. I don't know what that's gonna do. Oh, that's what the alcohol does. It turns you on its own accord. <laughs> don't get the alcohol. <laughs> 
Whoa, he's going super fast. And he just ate himself. Because he's not smart, he's just, um, average. And I just tried to eat him and died. Whoops. He was plowing through the numbers and then plowed right into the wall. I think I might want to turn the computer up to smart skill. Oh, I can actually, like, drop... Leave droppings behind me? That's kind of weird. So even though he's out of the game now, he still won because he had the most points. Huh. Let's actually set this to have some smart CPUs. And I'm actually going to turn the speed down a little, because that seemed a little fast. So let's start it now. Okay, this is more more comfortable speed. Completely forget what some of the items do, though. Not grabbing the booze, though. Whoops. Okay, so that's kind of annoying that the whole level resets when somebody dies. So, yeah, I would think that you would want it so that if somebody dies, the level keeps going. But yeah, this is actually a pretty neat idea, all things considered. I'm not sure how, if the, what other um, Nibbles clones exist that are, that are multiplayer. I can't imagine this is the only one. It's definitely one of the only ones I've ever played. And I like the fact that it actually does have AI to it. Some of these games just don't, that have, like, competitiveness to them don't have AI. And I also like the fact that the AI isn't totally stupid either. But yeah, one thing I would definitely do differently is... whoops. <laughs> one thing I would definitely do differently is make it so that if somebody dies, the gameplay keeps going. Because it doesn't make sense to reset everything when somebody dies. Okay, so I ran out of lives and I'm out of the game. So now I'm just watching the computer play. So yeah, this is actually kind of a neat game. Um, came out the same year as the last one, 1993. Although this person wanted $15 for this. Um, I would say that's probably a fair price. Just given the fact that there wouldn't be that many... Well, first of all, there would be a few Nibbles clones out there. But there definitely would be very few multiplayer, if any. So the fact that this is multiplayer definitely puts it a shade above other ones that you would find. Not to mention it does have an array of power-ups. It's got other stuff going on. Um, how do I quit a game in progress? Answer, I don't. <laughs> so, I can't go back to the, I can't go back to the options to check. Like, maybe there's an option to make it so that the game does keep going if somebody dies, but... Yeah, I can't actually stop a game in progress. But yeah, for $15, this wouldn't have been that bad. And, yeah, Snake Fighter. Check it out if you can find it. And to finish things off today, Seth Tierney's dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash ZZ Color 10. I think the lesson we've been learning while we've been going through these old Windows games here is that if it's in the unclassified folder, it's probably not a game. Even though I want to emphasize, this collection has, hasn't been advertised as a software collection, it's been advertised as a games collection. So the fact that you have a folder that's dedicated to stuff that's not games, and so much of it, that's kind of cheating. <laughs> but the, some of this is probably are games. Like, I mean, you've got, like, win poker right here. Like, how is that not going to be a game? And there's that vermin thing, too, that was ridiculous. Anywho, ZZ Color. Z and Z Color. Following help topics are available. What is it? Z and Z Color is named after my two children, Zachary and Zoe. It is intended for use by children, intended for use by children age two to ten, but is most appropriate around the pre-K and kindergarten years. As a professional computer programmer and a devoted parent, I can't help but look at a children's game without thinking about how I can make it better on a computer. More fun, more educational, and less frustrating. Okay, so this could be good, this could be bad. We're going to find out, though. Oh, it's ba it's a color by numbers thing. I'm guessing, just from the these right here. How to color a drawing, how to create a new drawing. Or it could just be color in just 
may not be by numbers, may just be a thing. And apparently this guy's selling it for $18. 15 plus $3 postage. Uh, Jason Balmuth. And how long ago was this? Uh, file dates? File dates say 93. So everything we've covered today was from 1993. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting way of going back in time. Okay, then. Oh, and it automatically loaded up the help file when I loaded it. Oh, maybe it is colored by numbers. Okay. So... Color 1 goes there. That's an undo. That's an undo. Okay, so color 1 goes there. Color 2 goes there. 3 goes there. 4 goes there. 5 goes here. We also have another 1 here. 7 here, 10 here, 9 here, 8 here, and 6 here. So what do I win? I win anything? Nothing? Really? Okie dokie then. Oh, there's actually a zoom function too. And then you can use the scroll bars. Okay, so let's see here. These are the drawings we're allowed where we get to use in the shower version. Now there's grayed out previous and next buttons, so I'm guessing that the full version gets more to choose from. Uh, let's color in the duck with the balloons. Okay, color one. Actually, what happens if we color in one wrong? Nothing? Oh, that clears everything. Don't click the eraser if you... <laughs> Undo if you make a mistake, erase... Oh wait, can I undo the... It didn't put back the... Huh. That's kind of weird. And you can also make it appear as letters or as symbols. You can turn the colors off on the bar down here. That's kind of interesting. So yeah, if I color in, like... Okay, so if this is on, it won't let you, but if it's off, it'll let you do whatever you want. So that's probably like the game mode or something. So let's actually start keep coloring these in here, and that's it. Hmm. So I kind of don't like the fact that there doesn't seem to be much of a game portion to this. Like, it's showing a 100% up there. Like, I don't know... Not quite exactly sure what's going on with that. Or maybe I should pay more attention. Um, let's do the bear next. Yeah, it still says 100% right there. Like, is there like some sort of game mode to this, or is it just coloring the drawings? And yeah, it looks like it does allow you to actually create drawings as well. You basically import like a frame, and then you can assign the number, like different numbers to the different parts of it. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's actually any score being tracked. Like, maybe that, but where it says 100% there is supposed to be tracking it, but for some reason it's not here. Actually, if we go back to the... Okay, so it's back to where it was before. And I think open is... Yeah, just don't let you open a file instead. Just in case you do have a special one that you made yourself. Anywho, we'll go back to the bear here. So the correct way to color this one would be 16 like that, 13 like that, and like that, and 11 for the back of his eyes. Oh! That didn't happen with the duck. Let's, try, let's do that again, just to make sure I'm not crazy here. <laughs> okay, yeah, it does work. So the bell has to be enabled the entire time. Or maybe it won't do it if you make a mistake at any point. Hmm, that could be it too. But yeah, when you're developing software for very young children, you have to keep in mind that a parent is almost certainly going to be with them while they're playing that program. So, it kind of makes sense. This A program like this, wow, this one looks... <laughs> those are some really small numbers in there. Uh, fit in window? Actual size? Zoom in? Those are really small numbers. 
Okay, so let's test. We've got the bell on. I'm just gonna try to screw it up. Oh, it won't let me. Huh? I'm not hearing the bell sound anymore. Why does it say 200%? How did that happen? Okay, so it seems like the program might be slightly buggy. But the point I was trying to get at earlier is that when you're talking about software meant for extremely young children, the parent's almost certainly going to be playing it with them. So, with that in mind, you have to consider that it doesn't really matter how complicated the program is or how precise the program needs the, needs the player to be, because the parent will be there to guide the child towards anything that's a little more complicated than usual. Like in this case, using the mouse as a fill tool. That's not something a three-year-old is going to know how to do, really. But with the help of a parent, the three-year-old probably will be able to figure it out. Oh, that's a nine, not a six. <laughs> I can color by numbers. <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I did a color by numbers thing. It was a long time ago, that's for sure. Okay, so even if you do make a mistake, it'll still bring this by if you do the entire... Complete the entire picture with the bell mode activated. Okay, so that was ZNZ Color. This is actually a pretty neat program, given the age range it was intended for. And I do like that it's like properly programmed and everything too. Like it's got the right justi justified help menu right over there. It starts maximized and clearly supports multiple screen sizes and everything. Like, this is actually pretty decently made. Uh, a price of $18, it seems reasonable considering that educational software is usually pretty expensive. But I do appreciate the fact that it does let, allow you to make your own. So, yeah, all things considered, this isn't that bad software. It, it does ha clearly have a little bit of a learning curve in terms of what the parent's going to have to do, but it's not a huge one by any stretch. And that was weird, the 200% that was showing earlier, too. But, yeah, it actually works well enough.